onto my floor. I think this is the first video I've ever filmed on the floor, but desperate physics calls for desperate measures or something. So I found this video online of the coolest little contraption. It was called World's Simplest Electric Train. I'll put the link in the description. And it was this little setup, a spring, like a coil like this made out of copper and then a battery with magnets attached on either end, just like this. And you stick the train in one end of the coil and it just shoots through, kind of like this. When I first saw this, I thought, blimey, that is so simple and so cool. I have to make it for myself, but I have to make it better, which is why I have tons of cylindrical and spherical magnets all over the place. And you'll notice how far apart all these magnets are because they're neodymium magnets and they are so stupid strong, they will fly together and they will pinch you. Not that it's happened to me 10 times already today. It's on, out. Oh no, move out. Oh, oh no. And it's just a mess here because I wanted to make the best, most epic electric train. And I made the world's longest copper coil track. I'm all about those world records today, but uh, they're actually not world records. We've got our track. This was 195 feet of like 20-ish gauge copper wire. And so we're, I'm gonna hope that this is gonna go all the way around. We're gonna get a full loop. Let's see, here we go. Woo, yeah! Oh, it's coming around. Yes! <gasps> it is going so fast. Oh, we're stuck. This is awesome. I feel like a little kid. Oh no. Disaster. So I cannot go on with life without talking about how this works. So we put magnets on either end, which should be a clue as to what's going on. One magnet goes on the positive terminal and one goes on the negative terminal. Then when you stick this magnet train into the copper coil, and ideally the magnets are gonna be bigger than the battery so that the magnets are touching the wire. One of the magnets touches the coil on one side and one touches on the other side so that you get electricity. You get electrons flowing through the coil. When you run electricity through a coil, it makes a magnetic field like this. And you can tell that that current is flowing because sometimes like if you flip one of the magnets around and then try to push it through it'll actually spark sometimes and it just vibrates it won't go so why do the magnets have to be in a certain orientation in an electric field bear with me in an electric field a negative electric charge will feel force in one direction and a positive electric charge will feel a force it'll be pushed in the opposite direction in a magnetic field, it's very similar. A north magnetic pole will be pushed in one direction in a magnetic field, and a south pole will be pushed in the other direction. The problem is that you never find north and south poles without the other. So if you just put a magnet with a north and south pole in a magnetic field, it's not gonna move. But if the magnetic field is not the same all over, what you call a non-uniform magnetic field. You might feel a slightly bigger push on the north pole than on the south pole of the magnet. And that's what's happening here. The magnetic field being created by that current is strongest in the middle and then it spreads out, it diverges or it becomes weaker on the ends. Where you've got these poles facing each other, say two norths in the middle, they're feeling a stronger push than the souths on the outside. And if that push is in the right direction, it's gonna shoot straight through, like so. So now we know it works. Now it's time to play. I've got this uh, pretty large C magnet and a huge copper coil. We're gonna put these inch diameter magnets on either end. This is dangerous because they don't stay on very well to this little nubbin thing. <laughs> This is probably not gonna end well, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Okay, I couldn't get the magnet to stay, so I put some sticky tack on the end of this one. Mm, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try. <laughs> it's like an old man train. It's so slow. I really thought that was gonna be a lot cooler than it was. <sighs> well, that was a little disappointing, but there's more. This is a tiny little coil, and I found these batteries. They're so skinny. This is a quadruple A battery. I didn't even know these existed. I'm really excited about this one, so here goes. 
That was cool. This is my favorite little magnet train because it's just so cute. Like you could fit that in your pocket until these neodymium magnets smack together and pinch you in the butt. Yeah. All right, I've got to say that the the double A battery is by far the best one so far. I wonder if you could do more batteries like this. Like, a, let's try this. It totally worked. I wonder if you could do three. Yeah, that was awesome. You know what this means. I can put this through the big track. I need some space. All right, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Come on, come on. Yeah, woo! That was so awesome. This is amazing. You know, you can even jump these. I am having way too much fun. This is all getting very unscientific, except for the fact that this is all possible because of physics. I definitely encourage you to try this at home and truly happy physicsing.